today I have a new project. It's a 10 page mini album. And um, if you've followed me before, you know that I've been creating these uh, as printables for quite some time. But I've now gone and adapted it to an SVG file for Cricut and um, Silhouette. So let's get started. Um, I've used the Cricut chipboard for the cover because of the thickness. I like how it's really thick and sturdy and it won't warp. Um, I've used Cricut black cardstock for the pages and the coverings on a lot of pieces. And then my pattern paper is from Prima. It's um, Amelia Rose and it's the A4 pad, which is eight and almost eight and a half by 11, a little over 11 and a half in size. It's a really pretty paper pad. If you haven't seen it before, there's just a little brief glance. I love the flowers on it. There's some dots, so it's a really nice pad and there's enough in this to make more than a few um, albums. So the other materials I'll be using uh, is score tape. This is just an off-brand that I get on Amazon. And Baker's Twine, it's in kind of a brown and white. Um, let me push this light up a little bit better. Um, color. And then I've used Ranger Distressing Ink in black soot. And I'm not going to show you this, but basically what I've done is just taken all of the printed papers and I've rubbed this around the edges just so that when you apply them you don't have any white edges showing they'll be black and I'm using the black because of the paper colors and that it's on black cardstock if you had something with browns you might want to use a brown uh, vintage photo is the brown that I normally use or another color to match or coordinate with your papers so let's get started. I'm going to move some of this out of the way. I've already got my pieces cut out. Um, and if you don't know how or have never used an SVG file, I do have a video on my blog that tells you how to use the SVGs, how to get them inside Cricut Design Space and what you need to do to prepare them. One of the things I want to mention is this is set up with a uh, two inch, I believe it's two inches, uh, spine on the back and that will hold your 10 pages if you want to make an album that has more pages 20 or so um, you can put as many as you want in in one of these albums you'll need to enlarge your spine you don't want to enlarge the length or the height of it but you'll need to enlarge the width of it and when you do that you'll also need to enlarge your uh, center spine piece as well and then you'll wrap your twine more times obviously so, um, but that's very easy to do in Cricut Design Space. Uh, I may come back and just do um, an update to that file at some point later on and add a various different widths for the spines so you wouldn't have to do it. So let's get started. The first thing we have is I've got my left and right front covers and my middle spine. In the file, you'll find two pieces, and this is craft cardstock. Um, and these are optional. I like to use them. You don't have to, but they do give your um, your album, but I can't talk today, <laughs> your album uh, more stability. So I, I like to use those. And you see I've already applied my score tape on the left and right sides. When you fold these, um, you can have Cricut score these for you, but you really need to hand score these again so that you get a really good fold and you want to fold them inward on the raised part. You know how when you score a piece you'll have a raised part? So the raised part goes on the inside and fold away from it. That keeps this from cracking. It normally won't crack but just in case it's just a precautionary thing. The only other tool I use is a pair of tweezers to pull my um, paper off or my tape backing off. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. Now, 
I want to apply this to the back side and I don't want this right up near the um, center line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this oops, extra piece. I'm going to lay it right down on that center line without getting it on the tape. Just so that I'm in the center. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to take this and place it, butt it up next to the chipboard and then at the top of that piece. And this isn't really crucial up in the top and bottom. You can always trim it off if you need to. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Let's take this tape off. Lay my board right on that score mark. And with this, I'm going to butt it up and lay it down on there. So, you, what happens is you should be, if you can see where that crease is, you're just shy of the crease on both sides. So now, we're going to take one of our covers, we're going to take this piece of tape off. We're going to take the other piece and butt it up next to this. You want it pretty tied up next to it. And then the side with the tape on it will go down and attach to that. And now you want to make sure that it's even with the um, center spine as far as the top and bottom goes. Okay. And now on this side, I have a scrap piece of the same chipboard and I'm going to lay it up next to the spine. Whoops, I wanna take my tape off of here first. So I'm going to lay this, this side's better. Lay this up next to the spine. And then the tape side down, I'm going to apply this. Watching where it lands so that it's even on the top and bottom. I got it off just a little bit. Okay. Then I'm going to flop it over and use a bone folder and score it real good. Or not score it, but burnish it. Now I'm a little bit over here, so I'm going to use some scissors and trim that off. I just want to trim it down to the top. Same thing here. That looks good. Okay, so. Now, we're going to turn this over, and we're going to apply our left and right covers. So I've added score tape around the edges here. I'm going to add another piece right here along the edge. And then I'm going to take and add a piece down the center. I'll go ahead and do it on both of these. This is just to help keep the cover down and so that you don't get any buckling. And you want to add these first and then your, your outside spine. So I'm going to take the tape off of here. And the tape off of here. Now I'm going to place this, holding this up right against this fold and make sure that I'm pretty much in the center between these two points. Once I have it there, I'm going to press and hold and let it fall down. And then we're going to turn these over and press one at a time.
and check. You shouldn't be overextended onto the spine. So there you should be fine. So now I'm going to burnish it really good. I'm also going to burnish it along the top edges. And if you have little pieces that stick up, you can kind of press those inward. So here's the first cover. Let's do the second cover. The same thing as we did before. I'm going to flop this up, push this up next to it, and get it as even as I can. Then I'm going to press it down, let it fall. Now we're going to fold these pieces over and it really doesn't matter how you what piece you fold first this. Make sure that other piece of tape that we put in there is burnished down. Okay. So now we have our coverings for the front and the back. And we want to add our cover pieces. Next, these will go right here. So let's add our score tape. Whenever you're adding your score tape, I tear my ends. I don't cut them. But um, if you do tear, make sure that you don't have any tape extended beyond the edges because that will interfere with the working of your album, it will also interfere with the pages getting stuck. It's just not a good thing. So try to avoid that. Again, another piece in the center. Okay, so now we're going to add these. If you have any wording, like I have wording on this, so you want to make sure that you get it going the right way. Don't put your stuff on upside down. And this will be my front cover. So I'm going to do that one first. Again, this is just kind of centered. Burnish it. Okay, so the next piece is our um, outside spine. So I already have my tape on it. I'm going to go ahead and add in a piece of tape right like this. I'm going to pull that off. Oops. And I'm going to add a little piece right here in the center. A piece right up here. You want to make sure that your tape does not cross over into this area on the left and right side. Sometimes you have to kind of burnish your tape. I 
forgot to add two pieces on this as well in the center. So you want to add two pieces in the center, but you want to stay away from this crease line. So come in a little bit beyond that. good eighth of an inch okay and this is just dotted so there's no up or down part to it I'm going to take my album and fold it and I'm going to lay it right in the center that area then I'm going to fold these pieces upward and we're going to fold this piece over and this piece over to burnish this Make sure you burnish. And there we go. So now we have the front on our spine and the back. Okay, so the next part would be our inside covers and our inside spine. Now, we're going to put the inside spine down first. So what we want to do... Tape along the bottom and top of your middle spine, down the sides, and a piece down the center. Then we're going to remove the tape backing for those. I'm going to use this well it's not going to show so it really doesn't matter which side you use but you want to place this right on top of where that center spine area is and burnish it real good and where these go you still have this crevice in here you want to kind of poke these down into that crevice don't not real hard, but enough so that you have some stuck down in there. And the same thing on this side. Just do even pressure and kind of slow until you get it down, work down in there little by little. Now, you want to apply Score tape here along this edge. And score tape here. I know this is black and it's hard to see, but I just kind of went right up to the edge on these pieces. Now we're going to add our inside covers. Which one am I using? I'm 
Yeah, I was going to use this side. So, put my tape on this side. Then you're going to apply your inside paper just like we did the outside covers. Burnish. Do the same thing with the other side. Now we're going to remove the tape from here. You're going to flop this over and adhere, adhere it to here, but you want to make sure that that crease is down in there first, and just kind of hold your bone folder down in there and smooth that down, and then burnish it. And now it should work and move fairly easily. Same thing on this side. I'm going to kind of make sure that's in the crease. Hold my bone folder in there and push this down and burnish. Got my cover crooked as you can see. That's what I get for trying to hurry. So now your album opens and closes really easy and there's no stress on the other parts. And it will loosen up again over time you can always push these back down in, but you should be able to feel an indention in here. So I did include some pocket pages if you want to add them to your front or back cover. I'm going to put this one in here now. Now when you do these, make sure you have no tape hanging over that the whatever you slip down inside might get caught on. So if you go over the edge there, you might want to clip that off like I did. And just remove your backing. Then we're going to place this, and this is going to go all the way over and extend beyond onto this. You want to burnish it real good. So now you have a little pocket you can slip things down inside. This is a bit thick, but there you go. And you can put one on the front or the, and the back, or not at all, or use them elsewhere. So the next thing would be adding the twine. So you need to roll off quite a bit. I usually do about five arm lengths. So five or six arm lengths. And then you want a good bit of tail, probably a little over a foot long. And you're going to hold your thumb and hold that on the back of your spine Get your tail out of the way there 
Then you're going to wrap your twine around the spine just like this. And don't worry if you're not straight right at first. You can straighten it up afterwards. Whoops. And you want to wrap it so that you have 10 strands on the inside of your spine. Hopefully this is all staying in camera. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's nine, I think, and this should be 10. Let's count them and see. Try not to let your thumb up there slip. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oops, one more. Now we have 10. Okay, so what you're going to do when you bring this up is you want to cross these over, kind of get it towards the middle of the spine. Ugh, it's gotten caught over here. Then you want to tie a knot. Try not to let that go loose. If you do, you'll have to pull it taut again. Ugh. Okay. Let me tie my knot again. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now you want to cut off about the same length of tail. Let me get this out of the way. And you want to just kind of move these over to get a more even spacing between them. They're going to get moved a little bit more when you start adding your pages, but it's nice if you start out with them kind of evenly spaced. So there we go, that's kind of even. <clears throat> and on the outside back here, just tie a little bow. Oops. And trim your tails. If you want, you could add a little charm in there. Just however you want to um, set it is fine. There you go. So there's your spine. It's finished. Your spread these out. So now we're going to add pages. And the first one is just a blank page. So you want to fold all of your creases towards the inside. And you want to make sure you burnish those down really good. Then you're going to add score tape along the outside edges. Oh, sorry, I'm sniffling.
Make sure you don't have any tape extending beyond. And what you're going to do is you can either start at the front or the back. I find it easier to start at the front because it gives me something for the next pages to flip up on. You want your page facing like this with this flap at the top. You're going to take this, whoops, I got a piece of, yeah. um, this flap and you're going to run it underneath the first strand so that once you've got it done, this str the string or twine sits right down in that fold. Make sure you're spaced even here. You can move it a little bit later on. Then you're going to take another piece of tape and you're going to place it just to the right of your twine. If you want to add that tape earlier, you can. As you add your pages, it could be kind of difficult to get up in there evenly. So it might be easier the other way. Then you're going to take that fold and fold it over onto that tape. You want to try not to get your string, but if you do, it's not a big deal as long as you're spaced evenly. Well, if it gets on the twine, then you can't move it up or down easily. So now we're going to take the tape off of these pieces. If I can get hold of them. And then you're going to fold this down, holding this flap. It should fold over just perfectly. And there you go. Then you score it. I don't know why I've got a piece attached there. And there's a page. So now you have a front and back to work with. You could then add your covering. You always want to put the centerpiece because it helps hold the page completely. If not, you can get some puckering. So you don't want that. You want your covering, page coverings to be nice and flat. Center your page covering. And burnish it. And then your photo can go on top of here. Now I do also have in the um, file a uh, pocket page. So that one you would have to do the opposite direction. The fold would be below you. You would only put tape along these two sides like that and then when you're done there's a covering for the pocket pages as well. But it would go in the same way. You would attach it using this left flap just like that. So there you have it. That's that's all there is to the construction part of the album. Um, you can add again as many pockets or uh, pocket pages. You, there's a lot of other things you can do with the pages. I'm not going to go into that right now. But you just add your 10 pages and then you can come back and decorate the front if you'd like or whatever you want to do with it from that point. Um, I'm going to have a separate video showing you about the pages. I have some various different ways that you can add pages and add extra flaps and this time of this type of thing and there is enough room there you can see there's excess on either side so even if you get all 10 pages you can still even with photos you can still add extra elements to the pages so that's it I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time we should have another project coming out real soon um, it's a mini project but it also holds a photo album that's just like these which is another reason why I did this first 
So I hope you'll look for that, and I'll see you next time. Bye.